tonight and y'all, I'm just going to speak without a microphone. Amen. It's, uh, it's okay, I don't want to outstep my boundaries, but I'm pretty loud and uh, I feel like y'all hear what I'm going to say. I was talking this morning in uh, Sunday school about the Lord has given me four messages and I was like, I really know which one uh, that I normally do something a little different in Sunday school as far as teach. Uh, Teaching is preaching. Preaching is teaching. Sometimes they mingle together anyway. But the Lord used a message this morning just in some things that people said as we were talking and getting ready. And then tonight, so four minus one is what? Three. Three. So I got three messages that the Lord's been working on me on. And I mean, they, they really aren't that different, but they are different messages. And uh, so I feel like maybe God's... Uh, got a revival coming or something because a Amen. lot of times he'll give you multiple messages, you know, when he's going to use you more and more. And maybe maybe we got revival coming, but I want to say this, and, and I'm not going to harp on it, but I'm going to tell you something. Revival will not come until there is repentance. Amen. There has to be repentance. Amen. Amen. Nobody wants to talk about repentance. But repentance means to change the way that you think, Amen. to go the opposite way of the way you were going. We have to change some things that we're doing in our lives. So I'll give you an example. 9-11, the churches were full for two or three weeks, yep. but there was no repentance in America. America did not change anything. They went right about doing the same. Matter of fact, our government stood up and said, we will come back stronger. We will rebuild. They didn't say nothing about God rebuilding or going back to God. And if you read in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, that's when the revivals came, is when they stood in front of the people, read the book of the law, read the Bible, what they had back then, and the people agreed to live by it, and great revivals came. But we have got to repent and change some of the ways that we're thinking and the ways that we're acting. Because we're living in a time, man, where we're mingling and we're mixing we're mingling with the world, man. We're starting to water it down and we're starting to say that it's okay because of grace. We're all under grace. We all love everybody. We've got to love everybody so we've got to accept everything. That's politically correct, but that's not biblically correct. Jesus didn't give in on certain things. Jesus said this is the way it is and this group of people will not inherit the kingdom. That's what He said. That's not my word. That's God's word. But today, if you stand up and you say it, you're not favored real well. You're definitely not going to win any elections. So we have got to, as a people, get to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We've got to pray. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to seek His face. And we've got to turn from our wicked ways. And that's not the heathen, unbelieving world. That's His people. Amen, Tim. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. You preach it. Now, before I start, I'd like to pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray, Father, that you would give me the word that you would have spoken here tonight. Lord, you have really been giving me a lot, and I thank you for that. Yeah. And I praise you and I honor you for that. And, and Lord, when the time comes, I pray these other messages will still be fresh. But Lord, tonight, give me the word that you would want spoken. I pray, Father, that each and every person that's here would take the hardness off of their heart. Open their ears, Lord. They would listen to your word. Let it go and speak into their heart. I pray, Lord, that we would repent tonight and change in some of the ways that we are living, Lord. Myself included, as I stand before you tonight, all things are open and naked before the eyes of the Lord. I do not stand up here tonight claiming to be the perfect man. I stand up here tonight claiming the word of God. Yeah. And we need to, this country and God's people, we need to look at the way that we're living. We need to look in the word of God and let it line up and let the Lord tell the truth and let every man be alive. Let every man begin to see that we're living for whatever looks good in our eyes. And Lord, that we would return to you. I pray that revival would come to this church and that it would leave this church and go through this neighborhood and leave this neighborhood and go through this state and go from this state into this nation and from this nation to all nations, yeah. Lord, that yeah. we would return back unto you, that you would take the famines and you would take the things away, Lord, that are hurting your people. Take the bondage away, Lord. Take the power from the enemy. 
and return it unto your people, Lord. We have your Holy Spirit in us. Let us learn to use that Spirit, Lord. Let us learn. But Lord, let us humble ourselves and return unto you. Yeah. I thank you for what you're going to do tonight, what you've already done, Lord. I thank you for my pastor and for his family. I thank you, Lord, that this is going to be the best vacation Bible school that we've ever yeah. had. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to use people that you never used before. People are going to learn from this. The adults are yep. going to learn as much or more than the children. Yep. We're going to be blessed, and we're going to give you all the credit, all the glory, yeah. and all the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I rant and I rave, and I'm going to go to the book of 1 Kings. And I'll probably start reading this, Susan, somewhere maybe around uh, uh, 1841. But what I want to do is give you a little bit of an overture here. In, in 1 Kings 17, Elijah was told by God to go somewhere and there was going to be a famine and while he, the famine was going on, that he would be by the brook and he would be fed, Tina, by a raven. Okay? That doesn't sound like something good to be feeding you, but God told Elijah there's going to be a famine. There ain't going to be much out there. So for this season right here, I want you to go down by the brook Get refreshed, and I'm going to send a raven to feed you. All right, now in 1 Kings 18, it says that it come to pass that the Lord told Elijah in the third year, saying, go to Ahab and tell him that you're going to send rain. Tell him that I'm going to send rain. Go to Ahab. Now, Ahab was a very bad man. Ahab had a wife named Jezebel, and, and, and Lord, give me authority to say it. She was a Jezebel, okay? She was a pagan idolater. Okay? And Ahab was a bad king. He done what was wrong in the sight of the Lord. And so they got in a mess. Uh, uh, that's the reason why the famine came. That's the reason there was no rain. Because the country was living after the ways of their king. How many of y'all know that when the king's bad, the people are punished? Amen. When the king's good, the people are blessed. When the high priest was accepted, the people was accepted. When the high priest was not accepted, the people's sacrifices were not accepted. That's just how it is. So Israel finds herself in a terrible place because of their king. And they have a famine. Okay, And when Elijah winds up in a little battle royale, if you will, with 450 false prophets. See, the land at this time is being kind of ruled by Ahab and his henchmen. And he's got all his little false prophets his wolves in sheep clothing out here telling the people why things are happening and how they're happening and what all God's going to do for them. But they were false prophets. There'll be false prophets then and there'll be false prophets today in our yeah. time. Yeah. Know it. Yeah. Pay attention to what you listen to. But these false prophets, see, they won't go so far because just like Jan, Janice and Jan Breeze who tried to withstand Moses, their ways will be found out. Because the truth will always come to the top. So anyway, they have a little battle. And, and a lot of you know the story, everybody don't. But they have a little battle. And they go and they start trying to get their gods to set the altar on fire. Right. And, and pastor, they start cutting themselves. And you got to realize why they're cutting themselves. Because they're offering blood. The pagan world, how many of y'all know the pagan world offers blood? There's people even in South Carolina, even in Greenville that still kill animals and sacrifice That's animals. right. Don't think it Amen. don't happen. You can stick your head in the sand if you want. But we're living in some bad times. Amen. Amen. As it was in the day of no, so shall it be in the day of the coming of the Son of God. Yes. Now they're out there doing this stuff. They're cutting their self. And no Elijah, I like how Pastor says it, he's old redneck boy, you know, he's laying up over in the shade. He's going, you know, hey, holler a little louder, maybe he's asleep. Or maybe he's on vacation, you know, text him. Sent, go, see if you can right. get him on Facebook, you know. Uh, uh, he, he might be asleep or he may be on vacation right. or something. But guess what? As with all false gods, nothing happens. Right. Nothing happens. So Elijah, he says, you know what, Lord? If we're going to prove who the real God is. If you're God, this is what I want you to do. And he gets them boys to just saturate the wood. Now anybody that's going to try to catch an altar on fire, first of all, they're not going to wet the wood. Unless they trusted in their God. Amen. He soaked it. He made a trench all the way around it, Pastor. He made sure that there was no way. But the fire of God, that came down from heaven. 
the fire of God lit that thing up, okay? Yes. Those 450 false prophets were taken down and slaughtered. They were got out of the way. And when they were got out of the way, we get to verse 41, and it says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and eat and drink, for there's a sound of an abundance of rain. Sometimes yeah. some of that bad has got to get out of the way before you're going to get an abundance of rain. Rain in this period of time right now is just like today, man. See, we haven't really faced it so bad. There's a little old town out in Texas that they're looking at paying millions of dollars a week to have water shipped in on tankers because they run out of water. Some little town somewhere in Georgia, I believe, they say is real close to being out of water. Water's vital. You can't go without water more than three days is what I'm told. So, but they've had a famine for three and a half years, and they're needing water. And when they get these bad guys out of the way, when the true God shows up, when the power of God, when the glory of God shows up on the scene, and the evil is taken out of the way. See, what I didn't tell you was the people saw it They in, in verse 39. And you can go there, Miss Susan. But when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. Yep. The Lord, He is God. Mm -hmm. See, they began to change the way they thought. They were listening to these 450 fortune tellers over here that wanted to tell you what you wanted to hear. They wanted to tickle your ears a little bit. But when the fire come down from heaven... And they seen it. They said, the Lord, He is God. That is the real God. So Elijah says in 41, go get Ahab and tell him to eat and drink, for there's a sound of an abundance. Now listen, if I was wanting to get excited tonight and, and run and like I really want to do, I would tell you that somebody out there has got an abundance coming and just hold on and all that. I don't know that tonight. But I can tell you this. You're going to have as much to do with the abundance you get as God does. Amen. Now, you can, you can take that to the bank yeah. because you've got a lot of ifs and you have to be obedient to God. You can't eat from the Lord's table and turn around and eat from the devil's table at the same time. It just don't work. Good. It don't work. And there's many people out here that think they're deceiving people because, you know, you can shake my hand and tell me you love me, but I know if you love me or not. Right. You can you can tell people you care about them, but they know pretty much if you do or not. And if they don't, it'll come out. Because the Spirit of God will reveal it. Okay? But what I'm trying to tell you tonight is, there was a sound of abundance of rain in James 5, 17 and 18. This is what it says, basically. It says, Elijah was a like man like you, a man like us, who had like Passion, meaning suffering. And he prayed that it would not rain, and it didn't rain. Right. Then 18 says, and he prayed again, and it rained. What it's trying to tell you is Elijah was a man just like us. Ladies, that's all mankind. That's humanity. And he prayed, and it quit, and he prayed, and it started. So what's that tell us we should be doing? We should be praying. Because if Elijah was like us, and he prayed, and it happened, it's because I know y'all suffering. I know y'all going through some stuff tonight. Pastor hit it on the head before I ever even got up here. And I'm going to tell you why I know. Because I'm going through it. Because the devil knows that his time is short. And he's got great wrath. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he does. We have an adversary. He's a slanderer. He's an accuser of the brethren. He's a gossiper. He's the, the father of lies. And he is out there like a lion. Rolling around, seeing yeah. who he may devour. But I want to tell you tonight that after three and a half years, now listen, Moses was in Pharaoh's house for 40 years. Moses had to learn all the ways of the Egyptians. Okay? Yeah. You can say he had it made if you want. I don't think he did because I think something in him just never would let him be an Egyptian. 40 years he was there. That was a season for him. It might have not been fun for him, but that's where God had him seen. Elijah was down there getting fed by the raven. He might have not liked that, but that's where God had him for that season. Joseph got sold into slavery by his brothers, thrown in a hole, sold into slavery, accused of adultery that he didn't do, thrown into jail. He wound up being the right-hand man. He wound up saving his family 